Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Red Tool House. I'm Kelly, and it has been quite a while since I've been in a garden. Um, I've been sick, and we've had some really hot weather um, in the 90s and high humidity, and I have not had the energy to come out and do anything in the garden for almost a couple of weeks now. Um, we are going through a bit of a drought. Um, we did get a little bit of rain two nights ago, but it was very minimal. I think enough to give the plants a little bit of a drink. Um, so we are gonna spend some time in the garden today and I need to water all of my plants, do some weeding, and then Troy and I are gonna be working on trellises for the tomatoes, but I wanna give you a peek before I get started on what it looks like right now. So even with the minimal rain, we have got green explosion everywhere, although probably not as much in the plants as we'd like as far as opposed to the weeds that we have. This was my bit of experiment here with planting some sunflowers in a tray so that I could get starts to plant it individually in this fabric and because of my neglect they're not looking good. Um, these are the snapdragons and um, my little hosta plant is buried down in there a little bit. And speaking of hosta, this is a hosta that we need to get replanted. It was out front near the porch or actually would have been covered by the new porch that Troy built. If you haven't seen that, you can go in and look at that video. I love these poppies. It's early in the morning and they've not opened yet this morning, but we've got several different colors here and they are so pretty when they open. So depending on how long we're out here today, we'll see if I can show you some more of those. But I've got some weeds in and among all the onions. I do want to trim the onions um, once again because they are overpowering the peppers. And I've got some pretty small peppers but I've got some large ones as well as far as plants not actual peppers um, starting on there. But because the onions are falling over and uh, covering the un uh, peppers, I want to make sure I trim those back a bit. Um, you can see in this plant, and these most of these larger peppers in between the onions are the ones that I bought, um, not started from seed. But let's go back over here. So these are my green beans um, in the fronts of these little beds here. And then these are back in here the zucchini that I started <laughs> that has overgrown its pot and needs to be planted in this bed over here. But I've got two of those. Two of those right here. Here's another one right here. Oh, and now I just pulled them up out of the ground so they're gonna fall over. Uh, these are pea flowers. I need to train some of those back up on the trellis. Um, this is a bunch of weeds and pea flowers and some marigolds and some cucumbers. Um, you can see the cucumbers popping up everywhere. Plants. Here is <laughs> um, a bed of lettuce that have, is going to seed. Uh, here are all the tomatoes. So they're doing really well in their individual boxes and need some support. Um, so that's gonna be our main focus today. Here, <laughs> Timber is helping himself to some peas over here. What are you doing? What are you doing? Did you find some peas? Hey, hey, hey. No, <laughs> no, he wasn't eating peas on that bite. He was eating the plant. Um, so these are our pumpkin 
mounds and amongst the weeds here but you can see we've got a mound here 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 sprinkled throughout back here and most of them are producing plants most of the seeds have sprouted i've got the nasturtiums that are popping up in here as well in most of the mounds here's a nasturtium hiding under here we didn't think we were going to get any pumpkins in these front two mounds simply because the one of the chickens had gotten into the garden and dug up that mound pretty badly so I didn't think there'd be any seeds left but we've got all these mounds in here now over here among well close to the compost pile we've got a couple more well four more pumpkin mounds and these were the older seeds that I tried to plant this year in these front two mounds and I'm not seeing any pumpkins um, I also stuck some nasturtium seeds in there I'm not seeing any in that front one but I do see one here so we've got nasturtiums a couple of pumpkin seeds I tried to start in that um, and then these are these were some new pumpkin seeds and they are doing well um, if you can find them among the weeds and then here's another one back here back here is our compost pile and then that is just some leftover fencing that we put there for now so I want to come around and show you on the other side of this cattle panel here the um, tomatoes and basil that we planted along this and I wasn't quite sure how these were going to do these were some very small tomato plants again lots of weeds but basil tomato basil there is a tomato there he's very little that's a cherry tomato then basil tomato basil tomato basil <laughs> there is another tomato here and basil and tomato so because of the heat we wanted to try to get out here before the sun um, comes over the garden uh, right now it's blocked by some trees although it is going to be really quickly when that sun comes up and very humid out here um, but we've got a lot of work to do so we are going to get started I think Troy went off to get the supplies um, down at the wood shop for the wood that he wants to use to um, put together trellises he has an idea on what he'd like to do and I'm not sure what that is so I guess we'll find out let me show you some of these flowers That is such a beautiful color. Um, these are stalks. Let's see. Yeah, stalks. Anytime mix, so they're going to be a bunch of different colors. Again, you can see the weeds in and amongst the flowers and the plants. Let me come around to this bed. These were just the onions that I started from seed that I just wanted to go ahead and get in the ground and just see if anything came of them um, these again are the poppies along this side and these peppers I'm not sure if something's been digging those or the onions knocked them over so I'm gonna get those fixed up let me come around here to this bed here's some more stalks and they're so pretty let me get this out of the way some purple some white a little bit of a lighter purple here oh and look at this weed so i'm going to go ahead and get started on weeding while i'm waiting for troy um and i know i could probably spend all day doing that but i'm going to get started
Okay, so doing this with store-bought material would be foolish because it would just be a ton and ton of money. But what we're doing, of course, is just utilizing all the scrap and the waste that we have. Watch one of our recent videos where I was building a deck for Kelly. These, this is all the cutoffs from the deck boards. So uh, it just makes sense to utilize the material versus just piling this up and burning it. We ought to take advantage of it. So I'm looking at, I think, you know, this is almost like an, uh, it's not technically an espalier because we're not trying to make it just two-dimensional, but keeping it contained within this this is about one and a quarter inch thickness here so we're keeping it contained within that and just simply starting screws and putting this where we need to these are these are determinate tomatoes so they're only going to grow a certain height so we're going to that's why we have a finite amount of trellis space here vertically because we don't need a whole bunch but what I'm doing is just picking a side here. Some of my boards are a little warped, so they need a little <laughs> assistance. I'm even recycling my screws from our old greenhouse. That's how cheap I am. So kind of determine a height there and then just one side and then the other. So I can just come up underneath them like this. And that's the beauty. I don't have to be parallel with the previous board. I can actually leave it staggered if I feel it needs to have support wherever it needs to have support. It's like Bob Ross gardening. Just put a happy little screw wherever you want. And then what Kelly does is she comes back and for airflow and just for making sure we can control where the fruit gets set, she's just trimming everything that's below that would drag the ground. I go ahead and cut that one completely off too. Yeah. And those back too as well. Yeah. And so that gives us really good airflow there. Keeps the vine healthy. Hopefully reduces the blight. So now I just have 16 more to do. <laughs> but I've got, I think I've got enough offcuts cut already for half more than half of this and then I'll just go down to the sawmill and get more that's all I could carry up with the side by side but I think this will work well so this is actually the evening of the next day um, I'm going to show you what I was able to get done yesterday and what Troy was able to get done yesterday but he got called away to work in the middle of setting up our trellises so we're going to try to finish those tonight um, I was able to trim all of the onions, which I'm doing simply because they are falling over on top of the peppers. And in any high winds or, um, you know, any storms, which we haven't had any storms lately, they are blowing over and breaking anyway. I haven't done enough research on that to know whether or not that is detrimental to the onions. I guess we'll find out because I've been doing it all along. Um, just giving them a trim where they've blown over anyway, um, where the actual stalks have um, just broken anyway. So, um, but I'll show you what I did. I did get to give everything a good water last night. Um, we're still having really high temps and um, no rain. And I don't think there's any in the forecast for a little while. So we're gonna give them another good water tonight. Um, but I'll show you what I've got done and what I need to do. So I've had a few peppers um, either die or are in the midst of dying. So this orange bell and this orange bell back here, this one has fallen over. Um, 
and these didn't look that bad yesterday and I didn't want to water them in the middle of the day as hot um, and as scorching as the sun was so I waited until um, yesterday evening and those two still kind of wilted pretty badly during the day. Um, this guy needs to be stood up. Um, so does this guy. He needs a little bit of support in the back here. And so I actually have still a few more peppers. I've got a lot of tomatoes still that I never got rid of my starts in the solo cups for this. Exactly. So I ended up giving away some of my, just a few of my starts to my mom and dad um, who wanted a few more things for their garden. But I really have quite a few of my starts left, several peppers and quite a few tomatoes. And even though they are most likely root bound by this point. They've been outside and I've been keeping them watered and they're still doing decently. So that's exactly why I kept them and didn't just compost them right away because I knew that I may lose some of these plants and I wanted to have some backups that I could replant with. So that's what I'm going to do. So the tomatoes are looking really good. Um, this front row here um, closest to me are um, all romas that we started from seed and they're looking really good they're not as desperate for support just yet um, they look pretty hardy the ones that he did start trellises on um, they were just getting too big and they needed the support right away so that's why he started with those now I do need to go back in um, I did not get to finish trimming and I want to just prune off the uh, branches off the bottom of these that he has put trellis on um, just to give them some more airflow and just cut off those bottom branches. I also need to go through all of the boxes and pull out any weeds that are popping up um, along with the plants. You can see some of those weeds down there. Over here on this trellis, we've got a volunteer tomato right here, and um, <laughs> he's doing excellent. We haven't pulled him up. We just want to see how he does and what type of tomato it's going to end up being. Um, so we're just letting him go. He probably needs to be pruned a bit, and then, of course, we'll need to be supported against the trellis as he gets bigger. The peas are pretty much done. Although I do see some on the vine still that have come out um, and I'll get those. So this is the comfrey that remember I chopped all of this down and I will go and see how long ago that's been. That's been at least two weeks ago where I chopped all of that down. Um, but not a lot longer than that I don't believe and look how big it's gotten again and to the point where it's even falling over. So, so I can cut those down again and use them again for nutrients for the plants as they break down um, and provide nutrients for the plants, but also as a weed barrier. So in all of the um, drought that we've been having, um, the plants have definitely needed water, but the wa but the weeds are going strong. They've never stopped for a minute. And you can see all of these weeds all around these plants. But I really liked how um, the dark material here in between all of the pumpkins are where we had the comfrey. And you can see how... that is breaking down and did help somewhat with the weeds.
do you think you're doing? Hey, 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 get out of here. Get out of here. Ooh, it's hot. It's a bit warm. <laughs> to say a little sweaty. A bit humid. Quite miserable, actually. Humid. Oh, humid. So we finished, Troy finished, the trellises for the tomato plants that need them immediately. Um, these few, these four that are left in front are still a little small for trellises and we're running out of daylight. So we're going to stop there for the evening. Um, in watering tonight, I noticed, so there's a couple of pumpkin mounds that I can't quite reach with the watering hose. So I carried a bucket to those last few mounds, which made me get up and close close and personal, <laughs> up close and personal with those pumpkin mounds. And I noticed what I think are squash bugs squash bug. and quite a few of them. So if you have any tips on what we should do to treat the garden, we'd like to do it organically. So if you've got any tips on things that have worked really well for you for squash that specifically, squash, squash bugs, what I say? Yeah. You have to squash the squash bugs. You gotta squash. I guess about all your options are. Oh, um, what else? Well, yeah, as far as these trellises go, um, I don't know if Kelly mentioned it or maybe even I mentioned it. These are all cutoffs from the deck build job. Yes. And so repurposing all this material, which is pretty cool. That's why they kind of look a little crazy because <laughs> they, uh, they're just lying in the scrap pile. And then actually, as cheap as I am, every, I was just telling Kelly, every single screw that was put into these was all repurposed screws from tearing down the old greenhouse down. So I I like the fact that we can recycle. <laughs> we can recycle all this stuff. And as yeah. expensive as those are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a box of screws is now thirty, forty dollars. So I yeah. will uh, reuse as much as possible. So that's nice. One thing I think I would like to mention is, um, okay, so these are fairly close together. Yeah. Um, and so I do like the so far. I do like the idea of these. Um, raised beds, individual ones for the tomatoes. But once we add the trellises and the space in between, it is a little close. Um, mm -hmm. It's fine for this year, but I think we want to rethink this a little bit for next year as far as spacing. Um, but it has been nice to just be able to pull the hose through the garden and not worry about uh, knocking over the plants. They yeah. just kind of guided by the boxes, so that's cool. Yeah, then even the, we got to bring some more wood chips and actually got to make some more wood chips, so that's why the delay is there. Yep. But even with that, we can come in and uh, weed eat around this without worrying about damaging anything. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. I think uh, we got them a little too close together. What's funny, uh, tomato roots don't grow deep, so I could actually slide them, <laughs> slide them apart if I knew where I was going. But I don't think we want to risk that just yet. Let's just we'll leave them alone and see. Again, since these yeah. are determinant supposed to be determinate then <laughs> if we got the right thing yeah. there was this one marked box <laughs> of tomatoes that said roma but it was the only one there and now yeah. i'm beginning to wonder they're Suspect. a bit tall so yeah. we'll see, see so what some of these are yeah some of these are getting a little taller than i would expect these on the front they're they look to the kind of bushing out the way a determinate would yeah. these are getting kind of long and spindly so we'll see yeah but uh, obviously we can go up to about four feet some of these like that one i got i don't know what the heck i was doing there so that one's I've got big expectations, high expectations for that tomato plant. This is the king tomato. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I have a whole lot more cross braces right there at Kelly's feet. So yep. as we go along, and what was neat, I discovered that I can put two of them side by side when I need to kind of pinch the plant up tight. Like if it's got a lot of branches, I can bring them up. But then if it's just one of those things where it's already laid over and we're standing up, then I can stagger them. One on this side, this height, and one on that side and, and, and kind of get them to walk around. Uh, or, or try to get them to, to bend the way we want. So I like the idea of coming back and adding these. In fact, I'll take all these and just put them over here on our little table yeah. so we'll have access to them and be able to add them as we go along and kind of train them up. And, of course, hopefully if they're determinate, they'll, they'll hopefully stop around here somewhere. If not, then we'll figure something else out. So I think we're going to end it there. 
and um, hopefully the, t the extra peppers that I planted are going to do okay. I had to replace a few peppers, so I'm hoping that they're going to be fine. They are kind of small, but they're small better bit. than dead. Small bit peppers. <laughs> Which is see what, how it goes. what they replaced. That's right. That's all you can do. So, we're, gonna, we're gonna go get a shower and pray for rain because we haven't had rain we in. We have not had rain. Since I did the deck build. In fact, yeah, Thursday, so it's been two weeks and three days. since We, we had, had a very little bit of rain in between there one day. That didn't even count. That gave a little it drink, count. but <laughs> yeah, it wasn't much I'm at all. sweating more than that rain was right now. This is true. Yeah. This is true. So thank you guys for watching and we will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.